Hi, I'm Sari Sudekran. In this video, I'll show you how to expose Canon Log with the Canon EOS R5. By the end of this video, you should have a little more confidence in how to expose Canon Log, regardless of whether you're shooting RAW or all eye. Uh, my advice is to pick and shoot Canon Log every single time. I'm not a fan of any of the other picture profiles because they're not made for video, and I'm not a fan of shooting HDR either because HDR doesn't have more dynamic range or colors. Log has the best image quality in this camera, and the only thing better than all eye log is RAW. And the advantage of RAW is even though you can pick one encoding setting like Canon Log in DaVinci Resolve or in any software that supports Canon RAW, you can change that to Canon Log 2 or Log 3 without penalty. So that's why RAW has a tremendous advantage over all eye, and this is one of the advantages. First, let me explain what log is. In very simple terms, log is just a way to get the best dynamic range from your camera. So you get a little more highlights and a little more shadows, and it's all compressed into one image, which is why it looks flat. And you have to color grade log. There's just no other way. If you show log as is, it looked like there's some kind of fog over your images. Now Canon has gone ahead and given us a lot of lookup tables they have created and they know the sensor better than anybody and they have created these official lookup tables that are free to download and you can use them with the camera to achieve Canon colors regardless of what color space. So they have different lookup tables for 709, for Rec 2020, for HDR and you can pick the one that you want depending on your workflow. So there's everything uh, prepared and ready to shoot Canon Log. It's not very hard. The tough part is, of course, exposing for it. In the, in the uh, field, what do you do? Do you expose it uh, like you would normally with other footage, or is there a different way to expose? Now, I've been making videos for Log for different cameras, beginning with the S-Log 2 in the Sony A7S. I've done it for Panasonic V-Log, for Blackmagic Log. I've also shot in Airy Log, uh, Log C, and even Red Log. So I have a lot of experience not only shooting Log, but also grading Log. So I know what works. And with Canon Log, I've also made a guide uh, on the 1DX Mark III. The R5 has a very similar Log called Canon Log. It's not the old Canon Log. There used to be a Canon Log a long time ago when Canon first introduced Log. This one's different. This one is neither Canon Log, nor Canon Log 2, nor Canon Log 3. It's a mix between Canon Log 3 and a new variant that's supposedly made specifically for their DSLR and mirrorless cameras. And it's made in such a way that it actually matches with other cameras or cinema cameras in their lineup, like the C300 Mark III and the C500 Mark II, and now the, the newly launched C70, which is an RF mount camera as well. One last difference between RAW and compressed codecs is if you're picking all eye or IPB, if you're thinking about picking one of the compressed codecs to save space or for, a, for an easier workflow, I recommend you pick all eye or interframe. It's H.265, but it gives you 10 bit 422. And because you need to color grade or apply lookup tables to your footage, there has to be some amount of color manipulation that happens. And you want at least 10 bit 422 to not get these weird compression artifacts that you get when you try to grade 8-bit 420 images. Now there's a downside. One of the downsides I've seen is you, you need the uh, paid version of DaVinci Resolve to read 10-bit 422 H.265 files from the EOS R5. Uh, maybe when you're watching this video that might not be the case, but it is or it was the case when I first started using it. The biggest downside though is you need a very powerful computer to edit H.265. It's a very bad, probably the worst codec that you could use for shooting anything. It's great for viewing, but it's not very good for shooting. It taxes your CPU like nothing else. So a lot of people who might be shooting with H.265 would be well served to optimize their media in Resolve or maybe work with proxies and that'll help you edit your footage in a sane manner because I found that H.265 10-bit is worse than 8K Canon RAW and definitely worse than 5.5K uh, Canon RAW from the 1DX Mark III. 
but you still have to pick Ally if you really want to work with Canon Log. If you don't want to work with Canon Log and you don't want to work with Ally, then you might not want to shoot Log in the first place. I just want to get that out of the way. Now I'll show you what settings you need for Canon Log. It's very pretty simple. You go to Canon Log settings, which you'll find in the first camera menu itself, and you select that, and you only have five options. The first is Canon Log itself. Whether you want to switch it on or off, you have to switch it on. The second is View Assist. View Assist is basically a lookup table that's pre-built inside your camera that is turned on. So you can see a proper image instead of seeing a flat image. It's not recorded in your camera. Uh, it's just something to help you see the image and it's not exported via HDMI either. So if you have an external monitor and if you have your camera, you'll see a good image on your camera and you'll see a flat image on your external monitor. You can definitely download lookup tables because most monitors and recorders now from Atomos or from a small HD, they allow you to use the official Canon lookup tables, which is what I'm doing. And you can see relatively the same image on both monitors. The third option is the most important or the most confusing and it's color matrix is basically color space. The first is Canon EOS original and the second is neutral. It's very simple in the uh, Canon manual. They state very clearly that if you want natural looking colors, you pick Canon neutral. And if you want colors that are similar to the 1DC, I have no idea why anybody would want to do that. You just want to pick neutral and be done with it. Doesn't make a difference. If you're shooting raw, it doesn't make a difference at all because you can change everything later. And if you're shooting all eye, you stick to neutral. The fourth option are the characteristics where you can change the sharpness and whatever. Don't touch it. Uh, make sure the sharpness is at zero and everything else is at their default state. You don't want to change anything right now in the camera. You want to do it later in post-production, especially with Resolve. And if you're shooting raw, you can change sharpness later. So you don't want to commit to one sharpness level for all your shots because some shots might appear a little more sharp and some might not appear very sharp, depending on focus issues, depending on lens choices. Some lenses are sharper at certain apertures uh, than others. So you wanna leave and have that option available later in post-production, so just leave it at its default state, and that's what I recommend. The last option is color space, and you have it grayed out if you pick EOS original, all you get is 709, but if you pick neutral, then you have two options, Rec 2020 and 709. And this is the color space that is used when Canon Log is written to file. And it's the color space that is used to export via HDMI as well. So if you're monitoring on a Rec 2020 color space on set, and most people are not gonna be doing that, most people who can afford this camera and are working with this camera for whatever level of production would not really be using Rec 2020 at this point. Maybe in the future they might, but it's still a long way off. 99% of shooters with the EOS R5 are gonna be picking Rec 709. So it really doesn't matter if you pick EOS Original and Rec 709 or Neutral and Rec 2020. The important thing is once you pick these colors in all eye, if it's a compressed mode, you cannot change that later. What you pick is final. So in that case, I suggest you pick Neutral and I suggest you pick the color space as Rec 709 and then apply the appropriate lookup table later in post-production so you get the image that you saw on the back of the camera. And that's all there is to it, it's pretty simple. These are the settings, you turn them on, and there's nothing more to do in terms of settings. Let's move on. I pick Rec. 709 for a very simple reason. I use a Flanders Scientific Monitor and it's set to Rec. 709. I also have an Atomos Shogun, which is also set to 709. It doesn't support 2020, it's not the newer model. So for me, when I'm monitoring on set, my color space is 709. And also, whatever I shoot and I publish, it's mostly going to YouTube and Vimeo. Rec 2020, even though you might be able to select it and export a video, the thing is, if you have a TV that doesn't support complete Rec 2020 colors and uh, the entire HDR thing, it's not gonna make a difference. It's gonna still look like your Rec 709 image. So you might as well just shoot Rec 709 and it'll look normal to most people. Don't overcomplicate things. Now here's a scene shot with Canon Log. I placed a DSE Labs one-shot card, which has a middle gray chip. The lighting is as even as possible over the small gray chip. To get accurate exposure for middle gray, you can do one of two things. 
You can use a spot meter to expose for it. It's not really practical for cinematography. You can't carry a, a gray card everywhere and use it for every scene. That's why you don't see it on most film sets. It's good for understanding though. And it's good if you have a gray card, you can understand what's happening in terms of exposure. And you can follow along with this video as well. But in the real world, you have to outgrow your gray card and you're better off with a waveform monitor or a false color tool. One of these two things. The histogram is crap, don't use it. I've attached an Atom of Shogun with a waveform so you can see my exposure with the waveform tool. The gray card must line up with a value on the IRE scale. Now, what value should it line up to? Canon tells you that very clearly. Your middle gray is at 33 IRE. Now, don't fret if you can't see 33 because most monitors don't show you uh, IRE values in every one step. You just have to get it near the ballpark. 35 IRE is good, good enough as well. So 30 to 35 is okay. You can just eyeball it on the monitor and you should be fine. A little bit of uh, a small mistake doesn't really matter in cinematography. So as you can see, the middle grade chip is at 33 IRE. So this image would be accurately exposed for middle gray, but is it the correct exposure? In cinematography terms, maybe yes, maybe not because cinematography exposure is dependent on the intention of the cinematographer. But for learning purposes, let's just stick to middle gray so you know what's happening. Notice there are two extremes in this image as well. There's the shadow side and the highlight side. In an image, how do you know when the shadows are okay and when the highlights are okay? There are four things you have to be aware of. The first is the tone. As an image falls into the dark zone, there'll come a point when you can no longer distinguish between the last dark gray and true black. After that point, everything will be always black. Once it crosses over, there's no recovery. With Canon Log, it never allows a signal to reach true black. It has both positives and negatives. The positive is you get better noise and low light performance. The negative is it's easy to misunderstand that and keep things too low. I won't bore you with the details, but once the image crosses below 20 IRE, it always looks like crap. If you severely underexpose Canon Log, you'll have a hard time making it right again. It'll never look right, and the noise is not very pretty to look at. This is true of all cameras. They have different thresholds based on a lot of factors. With the R5, the limit you should be aware of is 20 IRE. Below 20 IRE, a second thing can be observed. You'll lose textural detail in the shadows due to noise and poor H.265 compression. This section is all but good only for the deepest shadows and black. Remember the golden rule. Keep your important stuff above 20 IRE at all times. The third thing to be aware of is in the other direction, the highlights. Once an image clips to the highlight, everything beyond that point is white. With RAW, you can recover it somewhat, but nowhere near camera cinema levels. Therefore, it's better to treat this clipped as clipped, whether you're shooting RAW or if you're shooting H.265. With compressed Canon Log, there's no highlight recovery. The EOS R5 clips at about 95 IRE. It's not too hard to see because you always see clip portions flatlining. Now, it's okay to clip your image. The common newbie mistake is to think you can't clip. Of course you can. Great DPs do it all the time. If you see everything all the time, it never looks natural. When it clips, the highlight roll-off is okay. It's not bad like cheaper mirrorless cameras, but it's definitely not Alexa good. As you can see, it's perfectly acceptable if you know your aesthetics. I've experimented a lot with clipping and how it looks on skin tones, and I can assure you, you'll be the weak link here, not the camera. The last thing to remember about exposure is the color tonality when overexposed. Most mirrorless cameras don't hold their color well after a certain overexposure threshold. I've experimented here, and the R5 does a great job, very close to what you get with the Canon 1DX Mark III, which holds colors very well. You can easily keep your skin tones at about 75 to 80 IRE if you want, and it still looks fine. That's overexposed by one or two stops. Now, how do you use this information to actually expose in the real world? Should you correctly expose the R5 or overexpose it or underexpose it? The answer is you should overexpose the camera by 1.5 stops about. If possible, two stops because you get a much cleaner image, but 1.5 stops or thereabouts. I've seen through my tests in this range, the camera gets the best image quality. If you're worried too much about clipping, then you need to find a different time to shoot in or light the scene. The other most important setting is the ISO. The native ISO in Canon Log is ISO 400. 
This is the ISO where the camera has maximum dynamic range and color fidelity. You can push this to ISO 800 and maybe 1600 if you want good images consistently. The maximum I would recommend with the R5 is 3200 ISO, but that's only for emergencies. So ISO 400 to 1600, overexposed by 1.5 stops on average. The bottom end, not below 20 IRE. Skin tones, not above 75 to 80 IRE. And that's the exposure window for the Canon EOS R5 for in Canon Log. Now let me show you a practical example of how do you expose. Here's a simple scene. To expose this correctly, you need either the zebras in your camera or an external monitor or recorder. I'll show zebras here since most people will only have the camera with them. For zebras, head over to the menu and turn on zebras. I only need one, so zebra one. And for this test, I estimate the skin tones to be at about 60 IRE or so. So I'll pick 60 on the Rec. 709 scale. That means once the 709 LUT is applied, the final skin tone should be at about 65 to 70 IRE. Let's assume that's my intention for now. I toggle the zebra on and change my exposure, light, aperture, whatever it is that you want to change. I've explained all of this in other videos. The goal is to get the skin tones to be about the number that you want. In this case, 60 IRE. And once it happens, you'll see the lit side of the face with a zebra stripe pattern on it. That's it. This is not recorded in camera, this, these uh, zebra stripes. It's just for you, so don't freak out. Once you have this, you know you're good for skin tones. So you point your camera at whatever, as long as your skin tones show the zebra, the lit side, you're good to go. The next thing to check is for highlights. As you can see, it's slightly clipping. This is normal situation. You can adjust the lighting. In this case, I'll just flag the light out. When you have things in your control, you do. And when you don't, you don't. There is no middle ground here. If I underexpose the scene just to get that stupid highlight preserved, I'll add more noise in my face, which is more important, the face or that highlight. Your call. For me, it's the face. The last thing to check are the shadows. Is it going below 20 IRE? Yes, in this case. So I try to add a little bit of light. Or you can use a reflector, but try to get that above 20 IRE. Looks fine. And this is how you expose Canon Log. Now, there are a lot of nuances to this. And of course, there's grading to consider as well. But this is what you do to get your correctly exposed Canon Log footage. For detailed instructions for Canon Log exposure in RAW and in all I, and for color grading Canon Log, I have published my Canon EOS R5 guide, and you'll find the link to that below. And don't forget to download my free lookup tables for Canon Log with the EOS R5. I'll link to that below as well. If you like this video, please hit like, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell you'll see on the right. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.